All right, in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the density and the specific gravity. So let's focus on the density first. Density has a symbol uh, called rho. It's a Greek letter. Uh, it's defined as the mass of the object divided by its volume. So if I want to go ahead and write down just in the mathematical form, the density is going to be the mass which has a symbol m divided by the volume which is going to have the symbol uppercase v now what's going to be the units used for the mass and for the volume for the most part if you take in a chemistry course the mass is going to be measured in grams and the volume is going to be measured in write that down fully so grams is going to be a lowercase g and the volume is going to be measured in milliliters so it's going to be in a, upper, a lowercase m and an uppercase l so it's going to be milliliters or you may see that in centimeters cubed and that's because recall one milliliters by definition is equal to one centimeters cubed so it's an important equality to know that relates the milliliters with centimeters cubed so the units for the density for the most part is going to be grams over milliliters or I can say grams over centimeters cubed however if you take a physics course I do want to mention that uh, slightly here the units for the density uh, the mass is going to be measured in kilograms because kilogram is the SI unit rather than the grams so it's going to be kilograms and your volume is going to be measured in the meters cubed so that those are the units used in the physics but you know let's focus more on the grams over milliliters or grams over centimeters cubed now how do you really find the density to find the density we need the mass and we need the volume finding the mass is very easy all we really have to do is just put your object on the balance or the weighing machine and it reads the mass for you and whether it's in grams or kilograms depending on what units that weighing machine reads however finding the volume is a little bit tricky now to find the volume uh, you can either if it's in a regular shaped object like if it's in a sphere if it's in a cone if it's in a cylinder you can figure out the dimensions and once you figure out the dimensions you can use those volume formulas that you have in and mathematics however if it's if you don't want to do that or if it's an irregular shaped object and that doesn't have a very um, that doesn't have a uh, formula for the volume then you can use an water displacement method and I'll talk about that in a minute where you insert the object into the water and s figure out how much water has been displaced and that's another way of figuring out the volume and it's usually an easier way to figure out the volume rather than just calculating the dimensions even if it's in a regular shaped object it just gives you less uh, chances for the errors okay so then you also want to know the density of the water so density of water in grams over milliliters or grams over centimeters cubed is going to be 1.00 grams over milliliters and I'll probably mention that in kilograms and meters cubed the density of water is going to be 1000 kilograms over meters cubed okay and uh, for, for the most time you have to know the density of the water uh, in, in chemistry and physics courses you're at you're asked to know a lot of stuff about water and density is obviously one of them uh, so remember uh, keep in mind it's one grams over milliliters okay well let's talk about the second term which is called the specific gravity when we say specific gravity the specific gravity of an object is just going to be density of the object divided by the density of the water okay so for example if I'm trying to find the specific gravity for aluminum all I really need to do figure out what the uh, density is for aluminum and divide that by the density for the water it's 
So remember the Al is the symbol for aluminum and H2O is obviously the formula for the water. Now the density for the aluminum is 2.7 grams per milliliter. So when I go ahead and plug that in there, it's going to be 2.7 grams per milliliter divided by 1.0 grams per milliliter. So your units cancels out here and that leaves you with 2.7 only. So specific gravity is just a number and it's going to be the same as the density of the object uh, without the unit. Now this actually works when you when you're taking the density of the water to be um, to be one grams per milliliters but if you use 1000 then your specific gravity slightly changes um, so keep in mind if you focusing on the units of grams per milliliters that's when the specific gravity of the object will be the same as that of the density of the object now why it's really important well the specific gravity which is the ratios of the density of the object with the density of water can actually tell you how much often a given object will be submerged in the water. Okay, so the first question would be, assume I have a object and the density of the object is 0.78 grams per milliliter. So if I go ahead and calculate the specific gravity here, it's going to be 0.78 grams per milliliter divided by 1 grams per milliliter. So it tells you the specific gravity is 0.78. Now, it, since the density of this object is less than 1, it's going to float. So that's one type of question. The second type of question would be, if it's floating, what fraction of this object will be inside the water and what fraction of this object will be outside the water? And a simple trick is whatever the ratios of those densities are. And when you doing the ratios of density with respect to water is just called in specific gravity. So in this case, I would say 78% of the object is in the water. All right. And then you're only going to have 22% outside the water. So if you know the total volume of the object, you can figure out what volume is going to be inside the water and what volume is going to be outside the water. And this, this trick doesn't really apply only to the water. You can also apply this trick to another object. For example, assume I'm looking at an solvent or a liquid that has a density of uh, 1.20 grams per milliliter. Okay, so if I need to figure out what fraction of this object, we're still talking about the same object that has the density um, to be 0.78. So that was the density of the solvent there. So if you're still trying to figure out what's the density going to be, uh, what fraction of this object is going to be inside this solvent, we still take the ratios of those densities but we just don't call it specific gravity. So specific gravity term is strictly pertaining to when you use water, but when you use some other solvent, you just take the ratios of those. So when I take the ratios of these, which is gonna be 0.78 grams per milliliter divided by 1.20 grams per milliliter, and then let's see what that comes out to be. So it's 0.65. So this 0.65 means we have 65% inside the liquid or the solvent that we are talking about here. And then 35% is going to be outside the liquid. Okay, so that's how you figure out how much of an object is submerged into the water or into a liquid by just taking the ratios of the densities uh, uh, with respect to either the water, if you're talking about water, or a, an unknown liquid, or any other solvent. Okay, so that's your specific gravity. Let's uh, let's do a, this problem real quick. So it says we have this irregular shaped rock 
that has a mass, so I'm given the mass here to be 25.0 grams, and it's dipped into this gradual cylinder that has the initial volume, so it seems like we have this gradual cylinder there, and this gradual cylinder has some water filled up up to 15.5 milliliters mark. Once this object is inside this gradual cylinder, so let's suppose your object is right there now, so this water level is going to rise up and your new water mark is 29.5 milliliters. So that's actually called in a water displacement method. So what you do is you put this object into the water, the water level goes up and the difference in the volumes here or difference in the marking here is going to be the volume of your object. So the volume of the object is going to be 29.5 minus 15.5, and that's going to give you 14.0 milliliters as your volume. Now, um, the only time you can't really use this water displacement method if uh, if you have different uh, if you if you have the object to be dissolving in water. If it does dissolve in water, then it kind of defeats the purpose, so you can't really use in that case. But, you know, obviously rocks or stones, they don't really dissolve in water, so you can sure use this density, uh, this water displacement method here. So once I know the density here, I mean, once I know the mass and the volume, I can go ahead and calculate the density by doing mass divided by volume. It's going to be 25.0 grams divided by 14.0 milliliters. So the density to get 25 divided by 14 is going to be one point and we want to have three sig figs here so it's going to be 1.79 grams per milliliters as the density of this object. Okay, so in addition to that, we are also asked to calculate the specific gravity of this rock. Um, that's going to be not that hard. All we really got to do is the density of this uh, rock divided by the density of the water. So the density of the rock is 1.79 grams per milliliters, and then divide that by 1.0 grams per milliliter, so it's going to be the same as the density of the rock, 1.79 as your specific gravity. All right, so hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.